Okay, this is the P1 paper from June 2021. It's question number nine, the last question on the paper. Uh, as you can see by looking at it, it's a trig graphs question. We're going to be looking at tan x. And then later on in the question, we're going to be sketching the curve of 1 over x plus 1. And then we're going to be talking about the number of solutions of where equations meet. Okay, so if we look at this question first of all, um, quick bit of teaching. What they're going to be expecting is that I have a knowledge of tan x, of sine x, of cos x. So as I'm looking at this um, graph here, I should automatically be able to put on asymptotes. And in fact, what I will actually do, because it says it's on diagram one down here, is I'll do it on this one here when I'm looking at it. But my knowledge straight away would say that I know the period of the tan graph if I talk about those two asymptotes first of all, here's the tan graph, and I know that that just repeats itself every 180 degrees, but we're working in radians here, so every pi. So that means that that value there's got to be pi over two, and that value there's got to be minus pi over two. If I carry that logic on then, this value here has got to be 3 pi over 2, which is actually going to give me the answer to my first question. But I'll also put on that this value here is minus 3 pi over 2. And I don't really need the ones in between, but that's 2 pi, pi, minus pi, and minus 2 pi. They're not particularly helpful in terms of the question at the moment so far. What was helpful was that the first question says, what's the equation of that line there? So part A, the answer for the equation, it's only worth one mark, so we can just write it straight in, is x equals 3 pi over 2. And we know that simply from our knowledge of what the tan graph actually looks like. Then part B, what does part B say? So part B says... OK, uh, they want us to sketch y equals 1 over x plus 1 and state the equation of the horizontal asymptote. And then they want to know where does tan x and 1 over x plus 1, where do they meet? Where, how many solutions are there? But let's just quickly talk about what 1 over x plus 1 would look like. I'll do it up here. And we have an expectation on the course that you know what some standard graphs look like and then their transformations. So one of those standard graphs would be 1 over x. The reciprocal, we would know that that's y equals 1 over x. It has an asymptote going through there and an asymptote going through there. So 1 over x plus 1, the whole graph is going to move up one unit so if it moves up one unit like that, then we've got an asymptote going through there. Let me just tidy this up now. One, one over x plus one, if we've got the y-axis and the x-axis like that, this is the line y equals one is the asymptote. So what I now need to do is to transpose that onto this graph Okay, so if I'm going to say, yep, yeah, there's an asymptote going all the way across here at the value where y equals 1, the asymptote on the uh, y-axis stays the same. So what that means is I'm going to get my graph doing something like this. And then on the other side doing something like this through there, come down, and down there. Okay, so that's actually, uh, where's the question? Sketch graph, that's B part one done, and B part two says, how many solutions are there to this equation? And this equation here is where one of the graphs hits the other graph. So B part one, is C the graph and B part two 
is how many places do these graphs meet? One, two, three, four, five. Oops. Let's get rid of the bits there. Up to two pi, there are five solutions. So five solutions. I'm not recommending that you use highlighters on the uh, exam, actually, so let's just get rid of this. We only want the answer five. A lot of this work is just showing you exactly what we're doing. So I've got one, two, three, four, and five values there. Okay, uh, on to part C then. Part C, they're just gonna start messing around with the range of values. So they say, for exactly the same idea, so, sorry, for exactly the same idea, how many solutions are there between 0 and 40 pi? So what I'm looking at is this part here between 0 and 2 pi. Between 0 and 2 pi, there are those two solutions. So between 0 and 40 pi, there's just going to be 20 lots of that. Okay, so between 0 and 40 pi, 20 times 2 solutions will give me 40 solutions there. Again, I'll get rid of the highlighter. That's just to explain it to you. Not part of my answer. Uh, that was C part 1. And C part 2 says how many are there between minus 10 pi and 5 over 2 pi. All right, okay, let's just be careful about that then. Um, if we're looking at that between those ones, 5 pi over 2, oh, that's annoying then, so 5 pi over 2, I would get another value in here. So on this side, there's going to be three before I get to before I get to my next asymptote of five pi over two. So there'll be three on that side. I'm not going to leave that all that on my diagram, but this is just explaining it to you. So there's three there. How many will there be from naught to minus ten pi? Well, from naught to minus ten pi. There's this rogue one here, and then there's going to be two there. There'd be two in the next one, two in the next one, two in the next one. So in total, I'll explain this afterwards, there's going to be five lots of two for those ones from 0 to 2 pi. There's, for goodness sake, sorry, there's this extra one here, and then there's those three there. So it's five times two, which is 10, plus one, plus another three from this side of the axis. So all of that makes 14 solutions. That's quite complicated, but it's fair enough. It's the very last part of the very last question. So I've got no problem with that going through and doing it. In terms of my actual answers, one, two, three, four there and I'm now going to go through and tidy this graph up so it hasn't got all of that stuff on that I was just doing for you guys. Okay, hopefully that makes sense.